So now I turn to our distinguished speaker from the same country, from Poland, uh, Mr. Oliger Geblewicz, who is uh, president of the EPP group in the European Committee of the Regions. He is also president of uh, West Pomeranian region in Poland and is also president of the Union of the Regions of the Republic of Poland. So a uh, very qualified uh, speaker, if I may say so. Welcome, Mr. Geblewicz, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, dear distinguished guests, dear participants. Uh, indeed, I'm, I'm uh, president of one of the Polish regions located more on the north, on the Baltic Sea, uh, not at the south as a Polska, so uh, we, we don't have such a huge problem with the air quality uh, like they, they have, but I think that we uh, all face the, the huge uh, climate challenges. So uh, the, the, the topic is very, very important and it is a real pleasure for me to be with you today uh, at this important conference organized by Chaba Borboli, our uh, member of the EPP group in, in the European uh, Committee of Regions. Once again, Chaba, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, and first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, all the Romanian, uh, the EPP local and regional leaders for an excellent result uh, on the uh, local elections held on the 27th, if I remember proper, uh, properly, of September. It was a great uh, result for the EPP and people, people see that it is the EPP uh, that delivered the right solutions on the ground uh, in those difficult times of coronavirus and they place their trust and confidence in us and really very well done. So congratulations once again. Dear uh, participants, let me start with saying a few words about uh, the European Committee of Regions uh, and our EPP group for those who are uh, less familiar, I would say, uh, with our institution. Uh, the European Committee of uh, the Regions uh, is uh, a political assembly composed of uh, 300 29 members and 329 alternates from all the EU uh, countries. Uh, there are presidents of regions, mayors, uh, presidents of the cities, of course, as well as councillors. Uh, the committee is the voice of one million local and regional authorities across the European Union, and it advises on the laws that have an impact on regions and cities. And this is around 70% uh, of the EU legislation that is implemented preci precisely at the local and regional uh, level. The COR has the six political groups. The uh, EPP is the biggest one uh, with 124 full members and the same number uh, of alternates. Uh, we, the EPP, are the driving force for the, of the committee working on the key areas of interest for our citizens and the climate change of course is one of them. At the plenary session last week we adopted the important dossier on the climate pact by our uh, distinguished EPP Polish member, Mayor, Mayor of Warsaw, Rafał Trzaskowski. We also discussed the Green Deal with the, our high-level EPP leaders, uh, Chancellor Merkel and uh, European Commission President for the Lion. And last but not least, the uh, EPP uh, COR organized a workshop, uh, Green Europe, Sustainable and Resilient Cities and Regions as Catalysis for Recovery, uh, launching a publication, uh, publication with a sustainable project implemented by the EPP leaders across the EU. Uh, all this is to show uh, that we are committed and we are take the climate change uh, seriously in the line with the expectations of our citizens. Dear um, participant, the title of the conference mentioned the governance of Green Deal. Let me underline that uh, local and regional authorities play an important role, role, in, uh, role in implementing the Green Deal targets and making the funds, including Future Just Transition Fund, reach those uh, that need it most. Uh, we, local and regional leaders, represent the half of a public employment, one-third of public spending, and two-thirds of public investment. Uh, therefore, we are the engines of change, building more, more sustainable 
societies. Moreover, we can bring together to one table uh, political leaders from all the level of governance, I mean European, national, regional and local, citizens, business sector, research centers, universities and other stakeholders to design a joint holistic vision for sustainable development of a city or, or a region. An innovative and sustainable energy tra uh, transition requires a profound change throughout the entire system. Energy production, transmission and consumption uh, with a direct impact on infrastructure, market, the environment and society, of course. We are therefore convinced that working together in the line with the principles of multi-level governance and subsidiarity is one is the only way forward if you want to translate the Green Deal objectives into sustainable local projects that transform our societies and make them more resilient. We are committed to work together uh, and implement ambitious yet realistic targets. We support cut greenhouse gas emission by at least 55% uh, by 2030 and achieve climate neutrality by 2050. Setting higher targets, while well, they look nice on the paper, uh, they put too much burden on our uh, local economy. And in the times of coronavirus crisis, we cannot put additional pressure on, on our businesses. The transition from gray to green economy needs to be done with the people and for the people in a just and fair manner. The transition in the coal and carbon intensive regions uh, should be a common goal where political leaders alongside industry give incentives in the line with the social market economy by proposing economic policies which move away from the fossil fuels. It goes without saying that most vul uh, vulnerable communities uh, need direct specific support to mitigate the social and economic uh, impacts of the transition. They should be provided with the uh, appropriate financial support, access to the knowledge uh, and support in a, uh, accessing uh, innovative technologies. It is important to establish regional uh, vocational training to uh, provide capacity building and to training to repurpose labor skills toward the more sustainable industries in the most affected regions. Uh, transition processes uh, take a long time and it requires considerable effort uh, at all levels. Uh, appropriate support should be given at the European level. Uh, we welcome just transition found proposal with a budget increased from 7.5 uh, to 40 billion of euro. Uh, the fund will provide support to all member states, but uh, will still be targeted only at the most affected regions. Moreover, to ensure uh, that the fund is uh, properly concentrated and effective and to establish a minimum aid intensive, uh, intensity, uh, only the population of the affected regions should be taken into account. We are also glad to see the proposal uh, to commit 30% of the next MFF and next generation EU to climate action. Uh, the climate transition funds should, should not be reduced uh, in ongoing MFF negotiations and they will have uh, as they, they will have negative consequences for the future of Europe. Uh, this is more pertinent in the uh, current situation we live in as negative consequences from the impact of COVID-19 need, need to be addressed. Uh, we also need to push more green and blue investment and innovation. For example, if uh, the required CO2 emission reductions by 2050 were to be over 90%, the annual clean investment in the EU would need to be more than tripled uh, from the current level. We appeal uh, for direct access to EU funds for local and regional governments. 
uh, as we know the best our local needs, uh, our local capacities, uh, and with the local solution uh, would bring the best results for our citizens. Better synergies need to be fostered between the EU funds, national, local and regional, as well as the more pu public-private pu partnerships uh, that will be move the transition forward. Investment in the new industries should be explored uh, uh, of equal or smart, uh, smaller uh, scale in the terms of size in order, to, in order for uh, workers to be given other opportunities. The funding should be closely interlocked with a cohesion policy. In the spirit of cohesion, aid should be given in order for people to acquire new skills and competences. Uh, it is utmost importance to implement measures for infrastructure development, innovation, research and science, business support and development, development of skilled workers, marketing, culture and tourism. In this context, exchange of experience and cooperation between regions in Europe is vital. Uh, cross-border cooperation and uh, access to uh, jobs in the neighboring uh, regions from other member states should be also be eased. And this is what matters in the end. Solidarity among regions and cities so that no one is left behind in this process either. We need to make the transition together in the spirit of solidarity. Uh, with the extraordinary circumstances in which we, found, we find ourselves as a result of the pandemic. We cannot lead, uh, leave any citizen behind. Now, more than ever, both climate actions and recovery instruments need to reach both cities and rural areas, as well as all sectors of economy. Otherwise, we will be faced with a new wave of populism in the near future. Uh, sustainable structural transformation in the regions uh, should take advantage of existing strengths. Uh, the existing in industrial and energy uh, fabric should serve as the basis for the future development and take into account the innovation and investment cycles of ex uh, existing in uh, industrial players. It is therefore necessary to build on regional industrial clusters uh, and operational skills, the skills of professionals and existing research and development strengths. Dear uh, participants, uh, we need to communicate the benefits of Green Deal and energy transition to our citizens. We need to communicate that the EPP is doing for them uh, a really good job. We need to show them that EU added value in the transition from gray to green society. Green transition not only reduces CO2 emissions, but it also brings opportunity for new high, uh, high quality job creation, R&D development, cleaner air, uh, the more uh, green neighborhoods, and what is implies uh, improved health and well-being of our citizens resulting in the reduction of health costs in the EU. We, the EPP local and regional leaders, are committed and determined to achieve a climate neutrality Europe by 2050. I would like to invite all the EPP leaders to step up our work as one united, responsible EPP political family, providing concrete answers to the social challenges, including climate change, to remain the driving force of transition to help healthier, cleaner, and more prosperous European Union. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me for this outstanding meeting. Thank you uh, very much, uh, President.